the Madman. Welcome to another set of cards from Murder at Castle Nathria. Today, we have the thrill of a few locations, as well as one of my favorite archetypes. Let's begin with the Hedge Maze. Druid location, three mana. Trigger a friendly minion's death rattle. Two uses. You know, this is actually quite possibly the best death rattle trigger I've ever seen printed so far. Play this on turn three, and then on turn five, when you slam down your Burning Blade Acolyte, uh, it's almost like on turn three, you know, you paid three mana uh, in order to on turn five get a 5-8 with Taunt. That's pretty good. And also you have a really insane follow-up to Hedge Maze already. Hedge Maze 3, Korok 4, and then trigger the Hedge Maze and then like immediately get another Korok. Dang. Yes, you look at this card, it's the only card from Druid uh, revealed so far. Of course, you'd be like, what in the world? Why is Druid getting this Death Rattle? It's uh, pretty obvious that the Druid set is going to have Death Rattle synergy. It's kind of telling that I think this card is already pretty good without seeing a single Death Rattle card from Druid, because just Korak, Burning Blade, Acolyte, and Azumot already look like a pretty good package with Hedge Maze. Speaking of strong locations, how about this Priest one? Cathedral of Atonement, three mana, give a minion plus two plus one and draw a card. It has three uses. This is Hand of a Doll, except you get three Hand of a Dolls uh, for one more mana. The only catch is that you're playing this in Priest, which is a class that's not well known for its minions, but I guess now it is. Probably play this with the Naga Zoo type deck. You could play this in Quest Priest as well. Quest Priest plays a bunch of minions, uh, which aren't necessarily that good, but you know, they're better when you atone them and then you draw more cards, which is kind of useful for Quest Priest. I mean, this card is just good with a lot of uh, follow ups too. You follow it up with Blade Master Akani, you have a 4 7 Blade Master Akani. Uh, usually the counter to Akani is to kill it, but it's a lot harder to kill. Uh, a lot more dangerous when it's got more attack. Your opponent's gonna lose more stuff trading into it. Well, yeah, the point is Cathedral of Atoma is just a really strong baseline card. All you need to do is put it into a deck with a bunch of minions. So it's obviously a really strong card. It's three Hand of a Dolls for one more mana. And now we go into the Paladin side. Elitist Snob. Five mana, three, four, battle cry. For each paladin card in your hand, randomly gain divine shield, life steal, rush, or taunt. Yes, indeed. Your favorite Zilliax is back, uh, as long as you have four or more paladin cards in your hand. And it's even better than Zilliax, it's a three, four, divine shield, life steal, rush, taunt, uh, instead of a three, two. A holy paladin is currently an archetype that's totally fine and also has a lot of paladin cards. Uh, this is a cool direction for pure paladin to go. Also, fun note, we did get to see Elitist Snob actually played as a 4-4 in the, like, initial reveal stream, and they only changed it to a 3-4 pretty recently, I would imagine. Uh, so that does mean it was too powerful at a 4-4. You know, 3-4? I could see it. Like, if it was ridiculously good as a 4-4, so much so that they felt like they had to change it pretty late in the uh, phase of design. Like, the 3-4 seems like it would be pretty good. Now, the other three Paladin cards we're going to see are also pretty exciting. Uh, we'll start with Sinful Su Chef. One mana, two, one. Death Rattle, add two Silver Hand Recruits to your hand. This card makes Drygold's Jailer look very silly. Uh, one mana less, one attack more. Sure, you get one less Silver Hand Recruit, but you get to play this on turn one. Uh, you know what so this card is really good in? Uh, you can play this in Quest Paladin, and the Silver Hand Recruit is also a one drop. Now, I'm not saying that you're gonna have to run Silver Hand Recruits in your Quest Paladin, but you will run Sunful Su Chef in your Quest Paladin deck if that's a deck. But you also might run this in the Silver Hand Recruit deck, which apparently is going to be a theme in this set. Let's take a look at Mr. Buffett here. Battlecry, summon two Silver Hand Recruits. Infuse three, give them plus two attack and Divine Shield. So this is a card that's already Grim Necromancer, just baseline, but has the added benefits of one, it's a Paladin card, so it does benefit Elitist Snob. 
Now, if you get the infuse off right there, uh, and if you count divine shield as one health apiece, which is the bare minimum you should ever count divine shield as. I usually count it as two, but we're just, you know, we're going to be like, oh, wow, that sounds too OP if we count divine shield as two health. Then this is a four mana, eight, eight. Turn one, sinful Sue chef. Turn two, silver hand recruit, silver hand recruit. Uh, turn four, you got your buffet biggin. And he's going to be super happy because he's got a lot to eat. So yeah, uh, this guy seems great if you're going to be playing a deck with Silver Hand Recruits. Or with, like, a bunch of guys. And now, the cherry on top, which is a really, really big cherry. This is, you put an ice cream sundae on the ice cream sundae. And then you put a cherry on the top of that one. A Steward the Steward, 3 mana, 3, 3. Death Rattle give the next Silver Hand Recruit you summon plus 3, plus 3 in this Death Rattle. Wow. Wow! Back in my day, when I played mid-range Paladin, I played a 6 mana 6-3 six, so I could push the button and get two 1-1s. One, well, you know what? Now all you gotta do is you play a 3 mana 3-3, three, three, and then it dies, and then you push the button and you get a 4-4. 4-4 four, four. Four, four is a pretty big threat, like your opponent might have to kill it. Then you can like just press the button again and then summon another 4-4. Four, four. Yo, that's that's insane. Back in my day! Yeah, I had to pay 9 mana and skip my turn uh, to play Jaraxxus, and then use my hero power to get a 6-6. Six, six. You play 3 mana and your hero power is summon a 4-4! Four, four. What? It's like, what, zero? It's like, no card <laughs> required in this 2 mana summon 4-4! Four, four. Uh, this button is insane! You don't even have to be playing control deck, just play Steward the Steward! Steward the Steward! Uh, just, just play Guy deck. You don't even need to put this guy into a guy deck, just play this guy in like any Paladin deck ever. Holy cow. The only thing I can really say about this card is I think this card is so good that you might not want to play Renathal because then you have a slightly lower chance of drawing Stuart the Steward. There is a slight downside, which is that when you play Cariel, the hero card, uh, you do change your hero power from summoning a dude to buffing your hand. But the good news is you can summon Silver Hand Recruits uh, through methods that aren't the button. For example, with the previously two cards that we've seen. And I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of these Paladin cards, because if there's even more Silver Hand Recruit synergy, I'm in Guy Heaven here. I've gone to Heaven and I'm surrounded by guys! So yeah, Quest Paladin, maybe not Quest Paladin, just other value Paladin. Pure Paladin, take two with Elita Snob. Uh, which is just play a deck with a lot of Paladin cards. Maybe all of them together. Maybe throw in Renathal while you're at it. Maybe throw in Reno Jackson while you're at it. Who knows? Lots of uh, different possibilities here.